Alright, what's up guys? Welcome to the Excel patch notes breakdown for patch 8.11. I'm John, I'm joined by Fern, uh, and hey we're, the, we're the coaches for Excel. So as with the last video, we're just going to be talking about the stuff in the patch 8.11. Um, we haven't looked over this beforehand or done the numbers on these, so this is just going to be like our fairly quick thoughts about all this stuff. It's quite a quick patch, so we're just going to be going through fairly fast. And um, what we'll do for the smaller changes before we get to AD carries is I'll be just going over them very briefly. If there's if there's one I'm skipping which you think might actually have an impact, even though it's a small change, just let me know. <coughs> um, so first thing, Pike, which we won't talk about. We might do a separate video for that. So let us know in the comments if you want to see something like that. Um, not actually out yet. Anivia, slight buff. Um, just makes her slightly more useful. Might bring back into the meta, but... I think she's already on like the the edge. Yeah, I think um Arcane like a few of these changes that we might see, Archangels like the mana uh, pool nerf kind of took a hit mm. to some of the champions that build into yeah. like tier rower and, mm. and require a big mana pool and it's yeah. more like compensation stuff than, than so anything. It's quite a nice buff, two second cooldown from for <coughs> most of the game, a little bit more ability power. Uh, Graves a little yeah. bit of a nerf. He's too strong. I think he'll still be really strong. I don't think that'll actually mean yeah. Graves is weak. I mean three AD and 10 to 5 seconds on the cooldown of ult. The Kha'Zix one, anything. they're basically reverting um, yeah, back to the old Void Assault, which I think is yeah. better because the, the new one is ridiculously strong. Like going I mean, into yeah, was just I so think strong. this still has quite a lot of potential. I mean, um, maybe R isn't immediately evolved now as just a default. Maybe there's more options, but um, it just, like yeah. it being 2 seconds of stealth um, and 3 times rather than twice. Mm. Is seems pretty powerful. Uh, to it, me. It's because you can't chain it, though. That was the problem. So what you could do with the old one, as in the one as of yesterday, was you could use yeah. the brush stealth and then your alt stealth, and so the whole yeah, thing yeah, was yeah. like four so you, seconds, even though for sure. Um, whereas now it's just Where, two. yeah. Um, whereas now it's just the active, no longer the passive, just walking in the bush and getting invisible. Um, I think it'll still be okay. I reckon you'll probably see some win rate drop initially, but I don't think it makes because it's like bad. Okay. Uh, then Whatever. Kindred again, slight buffs, doesn't yeah, matter I mean, that much. They, or... they keep slightly buffing yeah. the champion, but it got nerfed with um, Scuttlecrab being more important because that was like the mm. easy marks for Kindred to pick up, and now people can test them more. It's not so easy. Um, first mark spawn at 205 is significantly better for her because if you're a good Kindred mm. player, you kind of have a good idea of where your mark's going to spawn, and you're already there pretty much, but... You were kind of waiting around for a while for the first mark to spawn, which really was inefficient. If you wanted the first, if you wanted the first scuttle, um, and then them spawning ten seconds quicker each time, obviously gives you more of a chance to get more. But um, she's still pretty reliant on marks. Which hmm. Great. Blanc, slight quality of life doesn't really matter that much. Lee Sin, this <laughs> one actually I think affects his early clear quite a lot. So basically, the stuff comes on cooldown when you first use it, not when you do the second one. So in later yeah. games or in like actual fights, it's not going to matter that much because generally you queue and then instantly queue again. But in the jungle, when you're trying to get two stacks of your passive, uh, like queue, auto, auto, queue, auto, auto, it's going to actually make quite a big difference, I think. So his early clear will be faster. Um, I think this could be something that brings him back into like, maybe not top tier, but a useful jungler, especially when he's got those options of like the early game junglers to do buff scuttle, gank scuttle. That extra yeah. path that's just sort of a bit safer for these other champions. I mean, it's a champion that will always be good for people that are really good at the champ, but always be bad for people that aren't very mechanically skilled. So I think, like, at the yeah. higher echelons of play, it's always, like, been a good champion mm. um, because of, like, the ceiling with this champ. But I, I think the energy restored is really nice just to allow you to be able to combo better. Uh, even, like, after clearing, because sometimes you're clearing and then um, yeah. you're in a situation where, like, You've actually just run Someone out of comes energy in, but you've got no energy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can't really do anything, mm. whereas um, energy restore makes it much easier to just be topped up. And then I, I did, saw someone do some of the maths on, on the cooldowns. I think it works out as you, you can get about 1.3 seconds like more of a cooldown on your uh, ability than, than mm. previous. Um, so that's quite good on good every players, single ability. Yeah, for good players, I think it's, it's like mm. enough of a buff to, to make the champion. Good. And again, it's mostly just the early game jungling is, is going to be affected yeah. by this okay yeah. um rakan then i mean yes the heal was strong and the fact that he has a lot of damage in lane was was 
a problem. But I think the big thing is his engage, right? And this is not touching that at all. Yeah, I mean, He's still I'm not sure they can touch that. I think it's really hard to touch that without like, changing the champion, the engage mm. kind of side of things, just because that's what the champion like is Like W for. range or something. I, I just definitely don't think that the champion should yeah. be able to shield, heal significantly in lane and be a really good engage mm. tool. So I kind of guess that this is fine. I mean, it's definitely not going to make Rakan useless anyway. Yeah, Rakan was like, the highest pick support, and I think even the highest pick ban yeah. champion at MSI in total. So. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think he still might or... be, to be honest. I don't, I don't think there's yeah, a big difference. Quite possibly. Especially I mean, with, just... as we'll come to, some of the rooms later on, one of them especially I... is really useful for him. I think some of this stuff just nerfs um, his laning phase, which wasn't particularly good anyway until 6. So mm. maybe his weaknesses are a bit weaker and his, his strengths are. So Talia short. has some actual changes. I'll just go through them. So Yeah, quite significant. Some up upping base stats, um, increasing the passive, the surfing both how quickly you can get there and how, how quickly it, it works. But then the big yeah. one is the Q has no longer, is no longer AOE. Um, yeah. So it's going to push much, much slower. Um, the other thing, the W is actually quite a big deal, I think. It's like four seconds less cooldown, basically, until yeah. you're level 13, because no one's maxing which, a second. So that's like yeah, a big deal. That's the a big, big last deal. anyway, so yeah. any ability to max last, and it's got a, a straight base cooldown. Mm. Rather than having to max it to get a cooldown, um, it is really good. Yeah, and then uh, when you're on warped, um, warped ground, it just goes to one mana. Um, yeah, used to refund, but yeah. Cooldown's a little bit less. I mean, I'll have to see this in effect. I think so. what they want it to be is just you can't push so quickly because you just get free roams, right? It's not even the fact that she just roams well. It's that she pushes so so much that she gets free roams and you can't do anything to stop her just shoving you in and running away somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, these the, the way I read these changes is that it makes her a faster roamer in the sense that she's got more move speed and her passive gives her more move speed. Mm. But she's less she's less able to kite you in fights because she doesn't get the big move speed now when when like walking on her work ground. Her, her, yeah, um, she's much slower. And then her pushing. I mean. Uh, again, I saw some maths on this uh, a little bit, kind of on the internet stuff, and I had a look myself. And um, although it's no longer AOE, it, it also doesn't have the reduced damage to minions. Mm. So it, I, I saw someone talk about it, kind of hitting hitting the, the melee minions. And I think when you used to hit them with like one full threaded volley, um, it used to take like all three minions to like just under a third HP because it was AOE. Whereas now it kills the first one, kills the second one, and leaves the last one on like most of its HP. If you okay. just hit like all three, because it just does yeah. so much more to the first one at a time. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it, again, her weakness was like in later game team fights and stuff. Mm. She's normally just hitting a tank with her main damage source, which isn't exactly what you want from your your mage when you get another mage that can hit the backline while there's still a frontline in front of them. Um, so in that sense, it's not good. But I still think like. Mm. She still fits that same role yeah. of being a really like being able to shove better than most mid lane mages and then uh, roaming even faster now than she could before. I guess as well, it's like um, the AOE is going to have a bigger impact when you've got like a, a few items where you used to be able to just like once you've got your lost chapter, you also just push so so fast. Yeah, Which I absolutely. think it'll have more of an impact on it then because um, you can't you can't just like one Q kills the entire backline. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. so this one we sort of need to see, but. I like the theory. It's just sort of basically meaning she can roam just as well, if not better, but she her roams are more punished because it's not just like shove under the tower and then get a roam. And if not, if you don't get anything, they, you don't lose any minions either. Um, now it's yeah. slightly more punished than it was. And I just think she'll definitely do less in team fights now than she did before. Mm. Okay. Um, so... It will only be hitting tanks pretty much <laughs> until that tank's dead. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so I uh, got us the next one. Um, over double damage to monsters at level one with the passive. Yeah. Um. I don't. I have tried this a bit. His clear is much better in the jungle than it used to be, but I still don't think. Well, actually, I don't know. I would. I don't think we'll see it in the jungle. Um. Yeah, I don't know about competitively. I think but, you will um, a lot more in solo queue and stuff. I've heard yeah, people talk uh, yeah. about it as being like they they have felt like it may be kind of viable in the jungle and then really good top lane now. So. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. Other than that, it's just like quality of life stuff, slightly. Yeah, just speed. 
making the champ a bit less a clunky, bit, really, I guess. A little bit thinner. Um, yeah. And the ult as well. So probably won't see much Urgot, but we could do. Uh, I think if we saw him, other than at very specific counters, we would be seeing him in the jungle if it was incompetitive. I just don't think that's not what you want from your jungler, that, that sort of kit. Um, yeah. Except from in very specific circumstances. Victor, damage increased later ranks. Our oh, ray, ratio increased. Um, Again, for me, this is yeah. similar to like Anivia, right? It's like yeah. he got got nerfed because Tia, the, the Archangel stuff, yeah. like gives you less mana and stuff, and he mm. had a Q mana, he had a Q ratio, uh, a mana ratio on his Q, um, so they give him a little bit more damage there. And, yeah, I think yeah. the problem that I have with this is, right, the reason that I think Victor's not seen that much is because it takes so long for him to scale up into the game, and stuff happens so early on, and the team's are so active now, and this yep. doesn't do anything to that. Like, late game Victor's really, really strong, and with this uh, increase per tick ability power ratio is going to be a little bit stronger and extra damage on his Q level 13 is going to be a little bit stronger but by that point like, he's strong anyway yeah he's strong anyway that wasn't if the you got to level 13 and the, the, you're winning the game then Victor's a really good pick to have on your team but mm. it, it, if you need your mid laner to influence pre-level 13 yeah then and something that, like not, Talia no, is just infinitely that. better so I think we'll probably be he'll probably be in the same sort of state but um yeah. This is one of those changes where I feel like if in the next patch he's slightly buffed early, then this will just make him like broken. But at the moment, I don't think it addresses the actual problems of the reason I mean, you don't pick uh, Victor. Again, I think like there's a few issues with the way he is and his kit and stuff. It's a bit like Kindred; she's very reliant on marks. His ability to shove is very reliant on getting hmm. um, his uh, like hex core upgrades, and that's just something that doesn't change unless you change the way mm. that works. Yeah, unless you um, make that have a build path or something like Amp Yeah, like yeah, and it. you can get bits that go into it mm. that can give them a bit of an earlier spike or something. Um, you're literally sat in lane for 1300 gold all the time to, to try and get anything. Mm. Okay. Uh, Zin then, base attack <coughs> damage decreased, easily like decreased. I feel like these are just sort of... I don't think this is going to make any difference to how strong he is. Like, yeah. I think he's going to be really strong still. Um, I mean, Graves was really strong, so that so Zin's been seeing more play because mm. Jin's one of the champions pretty good into Graves. Um, and the early and now, battle changes. Because again. Graves is being played, then all mm. of a sudden he just gets a little bit of a nerf because he's getting played more now. He's quite an easy champion to play, so solo Q win rate on yeah. the champion like that. I mean, he'll still high. be, but I don't think this 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 change will affect his like solo Q win rate very much. No, it's just uh, maybe slightly, slightly but, but not really. Yeah. Um, Okay, E root increase on Zyra by 0.25 seconds at every rank, right? Yeah. I mean, it a allows you nice. to get more plant autos off during the duration, allows you to mm. definitely hit your Q. Um, I mean, I'd like to see more aggressive support, like like we used to see a lot more Annie and Zyra and things yeah. like that. You hardly ever see mage supports yeah. now, really. I've been seeing Brand um, pop up a few times just in solo queue games. Yeah, and I've really seen Fiddlesticks so into damage. Rakan yeah. as well. Fiddlesticks into Rakan is yeah. quite a common like counter now because you can just, every mm. time he tries W4 to alt forward, you queue him backwards. <laughs> but I, I just, I, I do want to see more versatility in the support role rather mm. than just engage supports or just ardent supports. Yeah. That I, I'd rather have there be options for yeah okay i mean if you want this in your comp having this ap yeah. mage that's obviously on a budget is actually really good it's so precariously yeah. balanced though isn't it really like it seems like one set of those is always the strongest and like tank supports are just way stronger or ardent supports are just way stronger or, or mage yeah. supports are just way stronger so it's really hard um, to balance it like that yeah okay so I don't think we should talk about the base stat adjustments. Um, they do actually have an impact on the game, obviously. But I mean, the basic yeah, TLDR yeah. is th they were worse early, basically. I mean, yeah. Um, you, you get I've to seen... level nine is is where it's about equal. There's 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 spreadsheets you can find online. If people are interested, I think it's pretty better to do that, and and we'll spend our time talking about um, other stuff if that's okay. Yeah, just a, a slight TLDR on it before mm -hmm. we do move on is that I, I did a little bit of the math on. Um, just the AD and uh, attack damage growth and the the base ADs, and it roughly works out at level 13. They they even out to what they used to be. So past level 13, technically, only carries a, a stronger base base stat wise than they were, but pre level 13, they're actually weak overall. Okay, um, right. Hunter's machete won't really bother talking about that. Okay, so so new items. Um, oh, just breaking my chair. Okay. 
Um, new items then. What's the best way to do this? I think maybe we just talk about it all in all in one and, yeah. and who uses the new stuff. So this is someone I really haven't looked into at all. So. Yeah. So that, well, that's fine. It can just be. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, basically the standard crit like zeal into I sorry, BF sword into full zeal item into IE. That's yeah. massively nerfed like, to the point where it, it's got. You can't do that as right. two items without a spike. At least as far as I'm aware, I think that was the idea, and I think it's been successful. Um, so you've got a few new things. You've got Storm Razor, which means your first attack after um, not being in a fight for a bit is a crit. It's a slightly weaker than normal crit. Um, crit it only gives 160%. Yeah. So it, it is good. It is good to rush, but it is better once you have crit as well. Um, yeah, it scales pretty well once you've already got crit chance. I think uh, we'll be seeing a few people that aren't AD carries use this, or this and a zeal item, because it by itself is actually really strong. And even with just like this and boots, you're talking like 1.25 or something um, in between each each attack. Like it, it, it scales really quickly. Um, yeah. Because it gives you 30% attack speed as well. Um, I, I don't know the exact scales, they, they aren't. Here or actually on the client either, so which is a bit of a shame, but um, it seems to be a, ver a, a pretty strong item. So that's that's that one. Um, we'll just go over the item by item, and then we'll talk about champions. Though, yeah, why not? item by item, and then rooms, and then champions. How about that? Because there's obviously a lot to get through, so we just want to make it so it's clear for people yeah. listening. Um, Infinity Edge is basically a late game item now. Um, doubles your crit chance rather than giving you increased crit damages um, and 15% of your crit, crit damage is converted to true damage so when you crit 15% of it goes to true damage um, so I mean it's technically like impossible to rush right? yeah it's, your crit it's when you super inefficient to... yeah, it's super inefficient yeah. to rush it's, it's even quite inefficient I think on one item because it's got it's increased gold as well Champs like Caitlyn did use to rush it, so that like sometimes rather yeah. than go the Zeal, yeah, uh, but BFC or board, even just, even they with the guaranteed headshot. Yeah, right? I mean, I don't know what it's like at three items, but even with two items, Zeal and Finch is a lot less Zeal item. I say Zeal, but I mean uh, like a completed item that builds from yeah, Zeal, yeah. Um, whatever yeah. you'll, you'll build from that. Essence Reaver, this one's really cool um, and and a bit different, something to actually play around. Uh, basically doesn't give you crit anymore it gives you flat 20 percent cooldown reduction um your autos restore missing mana rather than your crits restoring percentage mana um, and after casting your ultimate you get this buff um after the next basic attack um that means for eight seconds you get 30 percent attack speed and your basic attacks refund 20 percent of remaining non-ultimate cooldowns um so this is a really cool one which we'll get into more when we talk about the champions um but it's really interesting it's cool that you it's not just when you cast your ult it's after you auto uh, when you cast a roll, um, which means you can choose when it happens a bit more often. Um, but I yeah. think this is really, really strong. Really strong early item. Also, I think it's probably going to be really strong for people who aren't AD carries. But I haven't actually managed to test that. Um, because there's nothing in it that has to be like an AD carry item. Um, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the mm. basic attacks for storing uh, missing mana, for example. But it, I was just thinking... I, I literally, sorry. Jace with it in solo queue. Yeah. Jace with the queue, yeah. Or even just like, what happens if you go Triforce this on Aurelia, for example? Like, when you ult, you, you'll get cooldowns up really quickly. 20% for every auto. Um, yep. 20% remaining, I should say. It's not 20% of the total cooldown. And I, I have heard word as well, like, as well as going to cut this kind of going slightly off topic, but um, that the next patch is the final kind of mid season patch because they're split in mid -season, the, the mid season patch into kind of four patches that we've had. This is the third one of those. Mm. The next one's meant to be around, meant to be around technically top lane, but it's going to affect all bruises in the game, I think. So mm. um, stuff like this could lead on to them being really over tuned yeah. bruises if, if they get if it goes that way. So then the last thing I think, yep, yeah, is um, last whisper and stuff is now total arm pen rather than bonus arm pen. Um, yeah. I haven't done the maths on this because it's less. Um, well, Last Whisper is much less, actually. It looks like Lord Dominus is the same percentage. Okay, so is, yeah. Lord Dominus is the same percentage. Mortal Reminder is 10% less, but total. Um, so 
Lord Domus yeah, is I mean, really good against tanks. Doesn't with the Giant Slayer anymore. being removed, I think it was it's really important that they did put Lazarus for just less, where you'd never complete Lord Dominix, right? Just, yeah. You just keep it as Last Whisper for 39 gold and be happy with that. Mm. Okay. Uh, then the other crit strike stuff is just increased cost. Lifestyle items gradually decreased, I mean, slightly decreased in cost. Uh, 200 and 200. And um, that's just nice, just a nice all round buff. Yeah. Um, more of my Maltius, slightly better for 80 carries. Um, Guardian Angel, slightly better, but more expensive for AD carries as well. Um, right, so we'll, should we just talk about that then, in terms of what AD okay, carries can yeah. be using different stuff? Um, well, there's runes as well. This is like a really big batch. It's, it's really hard to condense this. Um, let's, just mean, let, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. We'll do all the items. And then, okay. Yeah, um, okay. And then the runes, and then we'll talk about champions. Yeah. Uh, Banner of Command, rather than 100% immunity to magic damage, is 70% to both types. Um, oh, which really? is going to be strange, yeah. So you're not going to get you can the, build it against anyone. Now. You can build it against Definitely. anyone, and it's useful in lane. But you're not going to get the completely unkillable one from Baron. Um, no. I don't know how this is going to affect stuff. I think you might see it more often um, in top lane, but not like it's not going to be like, oh, we got Baron and we got this, and they just happen to have a team comp that doesn't have any ranged physical damage. Technically, just very very good against tanks in top lane because mm. the lack of damage they do anyway yeah. generally uh, but on the other hand that means someone like a choga is not just going to be like or a scion for example is not just going to be like it's impossible to kill this he will eventually kill it no yeah yeah. yeah. Um, i mean they would do that with all attacks anyway like in the end but it would just take mm. a lot yeah so people like orn deal basically 30 percent more damage to it um yeah but there are some physical damage tanks which are going to be nerfed by this. Yeah, stuff like Shen and stuff, perhaps. Mm. So, Shirelli like is... do a lot of damage with um, yeah. Titanic Hydra. To it. So uh, Shirelli is now gives you mana regen and is more expensive and gives less movement speed. Oh, and longer active cooldown. So it's just a nerf on Shirelli's basically. Because yeah. like Vlad, Shirelli's Rush. I, I, I still think you're going to see it. It's still so yep. cheap and, and it gives you five for eight percent moves is also much better, but five percent is still really useful. I mean that's the trouble, right? Is that they put in these items for that are meant for um to support sports yeah. technically. They have to be cheap because the lack of income that supports are getting. But then because they're cheap for supports, they're also cheap for mm. like mid laners and top laners that can use use those stats really well. So it's really hard to balance. Okay, Runic Echoes, slight quality of life buff. Builds out Fiendish Codex rather than Lost Chapter, so you're going to get the use, like the 10% cooldown before you upgrade it. Yeah, that's much nicer as well because, um, yes, you don't get the, the mana of Lost Chapter initially, but you get mana off Talisman anyway, mana back it, while in the jungle. But mm. this is smaller increments of gold, so like Fiendish Codex is 850 rather than waiting for the 1300 of Lost Chapter. So, yeah. Um, AP junglers can now back it. You, you often don't get 1300 gold in your first clear to be able to back on. It takes a long time to do that. So hmm. you're going to be stronger at more income. Okay. Now, really. You get more AP, right? Yeah. Uh, 20 um, more AP is decent. Yeah. Runes. So Fleet Footwork's nerfed. Um, back to pretty much what it was when it was released, I think, and no one was taking it. Um, no longer. It's be better on melee than it used to be. 100% percent heal on minions if you're close range okay um which is nice 20 range. and it's 20 percent of range i just think i think i don't think this is gonna be useful Carry. anymore i think it's too much yeah like eddie carries are not gonna use this I, I mean i don't think it's too much for the mastery i think it's too much for it to be useful for the room sorry not the mastery um, yeah it may be used on more like junglers and stuff again yeah junglers like, like or, I know used to use it a lot mm, or top laners and stuff like that if they Someone like Fiora, something like that might be useful, depending on what you're yeah. up against. Um, okay, Domination. Hail of Blades. This is like the opposite of Lethal Tempo, basically. So your first three attacks when you hit someone get 50% to 100% attack speed and can go over the cap. Um, it recharges five seconds out of combat. So it's not out of combat with champions, it's just out of combat. Um, 
which I didn't actually notice the first time I looked at it. Mm. So, I, I mean, it's just giving people like Draven, Vayne, a good option in a rune. Um, I think it's designed for AD carries, though, right? Or like... Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I mean, on Vayne, Vayne, I guess it's really good. Yeah. I so... mean, even on Nar, it would technically be really good. Yeah. Him, that passive is super quick. Yeah. I have used this a couple of times, and especially in the early game, it doesn't actually feel that impactful. Um, right. I don't quite know why that is, actually. I haven't got the numbers to hand, but I feel like when playing Eddie Carry, when your lethal tempo actually procs, you can feel it proc, whereas when this procs, it's not so big. But I think it's probably, I think it is the same attack speed, pretty much. It, it only, if maybe just slightly less. Yeah, um, but it, that could just be the graphic. I mean, so I don't, yeah. I think this will be good. Um, it doesn't feel super good at the moment, but also this combined with Storm Raiders, as, as we'll talk about later, a lot of front-loaded burst for an AD carry, or for anyone using it who, who likes regular stacks. Um, yeah, I mean, again, again, I guess Varus is another one that can use yeah. the stacks. Uh, Ultimate Hunter is like Ultimate Hat, but Ultimate Hat's been changed. Uh, so it's right. another one of those ones that stacks up. So 5% no, the cooldown. Tree. Yeah, and an extra 2% per stack. That's the domination tree. Then sorcery. This Nimbus cloak one is cool. Um, so rather than ultimate hat, because that's been changed to ultimate hunter, pretty much. Yeah. Um, after you cast a roll, you gain a hundred movement speed. Uh, decays for two point five seconds. Um, and for for that duration, you can pass through units. It has a six second cooldown, but unlike other runes, its cooldown is affected by cooldown reduction. So you can get what. It could be down to 36 seconds on 40% cooldown reduction, I think. That might be bad math, okay. but I think that's roughly right. Yeah, Ram so that's place. yeah, so that's <laughs> that's quite nice. <laughs> or or Rakan, really. That's what I was talking about earlier. So you yeah, jump in, you Rakan ult, you get the movement speed, then you hit the first person, and then you get the movement speed from your ult because you've hit the first person, um, which is quite nice. You can. It's also yeah. really strong on Lucian. Because you can just ult at the beginning of a fight, and then even if their W W's not on them, the move speed you get from the ult lets you keep in range to hit them with the entire color, which is quite nice. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's just a, that's just a cool. I lo I love runes that like you can actually have a feel them having an impact, and it's not just like a slight increase in something. It's yeah, like, not you a can slight actually, increase yeah. stats that you don't actually notice. Yeah. You actually you actually see it work. Hmm. Gives you more variation, like someone's Lucian could be very different to someone else's Lucian because there's different options. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Dematerializer has a longer cooldown uh, before you can use it, but that's 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 fine. Okay, cool. Four so minutes now. Should we... Maybe... I think as, as this is a Marksman-based patch, right, what I might do is League of Legends Champions. Um, I might just look at the AD carries and we'll go through them one by one. Oh, I can't filter them by AD carry on the League of Legends website. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, you can we... go through them. If you open the base stat thing, then you can get to see them all there in a list. I've just got it on uh, League of Legends Wikia, but there's no pictures. So this is some slick production value. But On the actual patch note, they're there, though, where the base stats are. Like, okay, yeah, them in order, yeah, so you that. could just do it that way. Okay, so Ash, um, I don't think it, there's a bit, <sighs> it's a big impact on Ash, to be honest. Um, I've yeah. seen people take Storm Raiders on Ash, so you crit with the first thing, with the slightly worse crit, and then you crit with all the others because they're slowed. But I think pretty much she's just a bit nerfed because she was building crit. I don't think she's going to stop building crit. Um, but crit's just worse than it used to be, basically. Yeah, I mean, before there was, like, AD carries that would rely on t a lot of attack speed, like Caitlyn, for instance, so they would have double zeal and an inf edge as their kind of core, and that's when they would spike. There was AD carries that would go um, infinity edge, essence reaver, and a zeal item, because they were more reliant on the, the spell damage and their spell mm. cooldown. Stuff like Severe and Zaya, um, and even Ash. Mm. Um, and then there were champions that just didn't care about crit and yeah. just like on hit. That was kind of the three. Yeah, the so three I mean, she's, she's still going to be. Before. She's still going to be useful because she's still going to be a lane bully. 
and she's going to be an alt bot regardless of how much gold you have in the game. Yeah. Um. So she's still going to be a useful. With higher cooldown on alt now, mm. I guess with Essence Reaver. Yeah. So Essence Reaver with a with once you've got an item, mm. now gives you less than it used to. Um. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it gives you twenty percent. It used to give you up to thirty. Right. Yeah. But I just think she'll do slightly less damage because Infinity Edge and stuff like that. But I still think she'll be useful. I think general, generally it's just a nerf to all the creative carries, but she's still going to be useful because it's Ash. So Caitlyn, yeah. um, that was just a straight nerf in my opinion. I don't so know. Like, where, where are you getting your crit from in the early game? No. Like, oh yeah, you have to get... How, how do you get crit in the early game? Like for pre three items, you literally just have to get zeal, two zeal items, two zeal items, and infinite. Yeah, but then you've literally got no AD. You've got right? no AD. Yeah. And you've got less AD than AD carries used to have base wise because mm. of the base stats until level thirteen. So, I mean, unless again, there's like a component of the IE you build. So, so you, you just IE is BF, double, BF double. now. Yeah, maybe, maybe you build BF into zeal still into a zeal item. Hmm. And then another zeal item, like two zeal items, while you're while you're sat on a BF, then well, into you might well items. find as well that you get something like uh, BF into zeal item into just zeal into infinity edge. That'll give you what thirty sixty. Yeah. That I mean that gives you ninety percent crit. Yeah. So I mean it's probably something like that. Yeah, is where you're going with this to give you some to give you eighty carries enough power in the early game. Otherwise, they're literally getting nothing. Hmm. You'll just see eighty carries that don't care about these crit builds in the early game, which is again a, a big possibility. I think when like, you get how to does the... any of the stuff change, Ezreal, for instance. Yeah, I don't know. Ezreal was so high mm. tier. With... I mean, that's what we talked about. I think last last patch. Was yeah, just like I mean, he's got a completely one-off build, right? Yeah. That no other champion in the game builds like that. But none of this really affects that, and he's yeah. still just as powerful. But also, the even the other, before. even the other AD carries that we were seeing a lot was stuff like Cogmore and Varus with Rage. Varus, which not like, crit AD carries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the whole change is, I think, slightly weird. But um, and technically, there's st- like there's no changes to like Gwinsu's or and be it mm. um, the Red King's been buffed, it's 200 gold cheaper and stuff like this. Mm. So I think yeah, very strange. They all see. I mean, maybe unless there's a way that's like broken that we're thinking about, I think you will just see more Varus, Cogmore, Ezreal. Yeah. That's it for now, anyway. Mm. Um, okay, next one Draven. Uh, I don't know if you'll see Draven in competitive, but it is nice for Draven. Um, Hail of Blades is a mastery that you can actually really use well. Um, so you get those three quick attacks in. Uh, Storm Raiders. Or is it called Storm Raiders? Yeah, the, that new item is very good Storm for him as well. Raiders. Um because you you know, that first auto gives you like just massive amount of damage because it's definitely yeah, great. much more burst for um, sure. So that's good for Draven, but again he's still Draven, so I don't know how much you'll see in competitive because there's less kills and the team will be able to focus around him better. Um stuff like that. Yeah. Ezreal, as we talked about, I mean everyone else got nerfed, so Ezreal got even stronger i guess yeah i which think is, so i mean which is pretty crazy uh-huh. really like i don't know why that's a thing but that's fine <laughs> because that's, of that's its relativity thing. to other champions mm. i think relative to the other ad carries that used to build crit kids yeah yeah strong. no I, I mean i don't know why it's a thing that they yeah that you didn't got nerf even as. yeah For sure. um Jin, i think will be is will be really buffed by these um because you take storm yeah. raiders Storm Razors, and then your fourth I- fourth shots of crit as well. Um, as I said, when you've got like one attack speed item, Re- Storm Razors is actually a really short cooldown, so you could even just attack and then wait a bit and then attack on Jin, and you'd get a crit every yeah. time. Yeah, I feel like these champions that have got burst, like Eddie carries with burst, so e- even Ash, like with this Storm Razor, and you just lead with the ult, same with Varus, maybe same with Jin, where you like land CC and then you just lead with your next big burst EO attack. Mm. Um, benefit more from not actually having to get a lot of crit before they're useful. So I mean, you could go Essence Reaver on Ash as well. Yeah, I so just mean like getting... yeah, Ash at level six. If you had, mm. like, I mean, probably get it at level six. But once you do have like Storm Razor on Ash, 
you, you lead without, and then you follow up with your next sort of attack is the big burst or attack. It's it just accentuates the strength of being able to mm. one shot someone right during. The I don't know how it interacts with the ash passive. Um, oh yeah, okay. I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Um, so no, I think neither. I think it probably just ignores it. The one thing I was going to say is that Jin. So Jin's fourth auto is a crit anyway. Um, yep. If you have got storm rays on Jin, try and not use the storm raisers for the fourth auto because it overrides your natural crit. So the natural crit does 200% damage. The storm raisers crit does 150% plus your crit chance up to 200%. Yes, yeah, so um, it can never be more. So it actually does 160% if you wait, even though it should do 200%. Yeah, it can um, never be more than the actual Gen 4 Forto, right? Yeah, it will always be. Yeah, it will be less until you've got like two items. Um, so, but with Ash, because if they're slowed, you crit and it does a little bit more. Storm Razor's probably again does a lot more. Yeah. Uh, if and her crits do up one ten percent of damage or whatever they do at the beginning, and that'll do one fifty. So. Yeah, Ash was always nice. like actually very good into something like Caitlyn mm. because of her ability to all in such a champion from such long range. Mm. Um, actually have lane pressure as well, which not much had over Caitlyn, whereas I think if you play Caitlyn into Ash now, now her burst is much higher, and yeah. she almost guarantees if she hits that arrow on you at 6, you'll... Jin is also level. good because he wasn't using fleet footwork very much, and did sometimes, yeah. but you won't use it now, and you didn't need to use it before. Um, yeah. So that again is a buff to him, just because it's a nerf to everyone else. Jinx, yeah. same as Caitlyn, basically. Like, I think we don't need to talk that much yeah, about I mean, we can talk about thing. the type of champion as opposed to yeah. the actual champion, I think. So. Kaiser. Again, she used to be IE double Z, right? Yeah. So I've seen Kaiser take Hail of Blades as well. Um, don't okay. know how useful that is. I, I like Lethal Tempo Kaiser personally. But um, it's again just to get that stacks up as quick as you can. Um, yeah. Again, Kaiser really wasn't isn't going to be hit by these crit changes. Because you build like yeah, Red Blade not, and not as much. Yeah, I, I mean, mean you I might see more AP Kaiser. Any champions that have a passive where it relies on a certain number of stacks, as well as going and crit, they can normally also go on hit to just try and get as many passive rocks as possible. Mm. So um, I think that that leaves her in a better spot than than a lot of these other ADs. Mm. Um. So yeah, I think she'll get. I mean, she'll be top tier still. As she was yep. before. Callista. Haven't really thought about Callista, but I mean she was even though other crit. people being nerfed, like she's not been buffed by these changes, I don't think. Oh well, yeah. I don't think she's been nerfed either though. Yeah. Like, as in relative to other champions, she's probably stronger than she was because Yeah, uh, I mean relative to weaker and she crit champions, not. but like she's still so. not gonna be as good as like Ares or Kaiser or like Cogmon. Yeah, I mean like I guess because she's like a two out, but I mean, traditionally, she's a Blade of the Rune King Hurricane Spike two item champion. Mm. Um, potentially because it takes so much longer for crit users to be good now. Mm. Um, she Get has more a, use, of a window, but, uh, but I, I think she's still definitely worth mm. like, she, and she'll uh, still than, be using Ezreal tempo rather than, uh, Yeah, blades. and Blade of the Rune King got 200, 200 off, so her spike's mm. a little bit quicker, and I, I don't know. So, yeah, I okay. Think she's okay. Cogmore, this is one that I, I want to talk about a bit. I think so. Essence Reaver has an inbuilt 30 second cooldown. Um, with 30 seconds, is not actually that high, obviously. So, most people are going to have some time where their ultimate's on cooldown, but Essence Reaver's up. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. spam it like every Cogmore auto. But what it does mean is that when you have the Essence Reaver up, if you hit an auto, it, you proc it, I forgot what it's called. So, you ult, you auto someone. Uh, you can get your W on pretty much non-stop, even if you're not hitting someone all the time. Uh, if you're hitting which someone is, all the time, I think it just lasts until the buff wears off, which is I mean, pretty cool. Cogmore was insane in team fights when his W was up, but that was your window to go in when it was mm. down. Because one, he became significantly shorter range, and two, because he did significantly less damage. But with it mm. up for the whole duration of a team fight, it's silly. Yeah. So, you know, sure, like... Even if you haven't got any items, if you just I've been, the dark, yeah. Don't, so I, I've don't been don't at work. the moment um, doing Essence Reaver first. I don't think that's the best thing to do. Um, you do get thirty no. percent extra attack speed from Essence Reaver as well, so it is a really strong item and it's a really strong one item power spike. But if you go like either Rage Blade or Blazer Rune King into Essence Reaver, um, that's going to yep. be really, really strong. 
take. Yeah, because it's permanently up, and you'd get double, double on hits with your W, mm-hmm. with the Rage Blade. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think something yeah. So like... you get all the power that you did have from Cogmore just before this patch, but it's just even better than it was because the Essence Reaper yeah. means you're double. I think something like Rage time. Blade Essence Hurricane, and you're doing that AOE permanent to the whole team, non-stop mm. W is the most disgusting. Spike yeah, he also has the um, the ultimate thing. What's it called? Uh, Nimbus? No, Nimbus Cloak is it? The one where when you cast your I'm just quickly scrolling down for it. When you cast your ultimate, you get movement speed. It is Nimbus Cloak? Yeah. So yes, that has a 60 second cooldown, drops down to sort of 30, 40 seconds. But again, I mean, we saw Cogmore's buying uh, Righteous Glory, right? Because when they've got late game, if they if you you just need to get in range for a couple of the first few autos and you do so much damage that you just chunk through anyone. So if yeah. you can ult and it just gives you a burst of movement speed and then you can just chunk through anyone, that's super, super useful in a team fight. So I think Cogmo's <laughs> yeah. really strong from these changes. Absolutely. I don't know if we'll see Storm Razors on him, but everything else basically is good. Yeah. Uh, Lucian. Lucian, I think, is really good from these as well. Um didn't need to build crit. I don't know if you go crit now or if you don't, but you, again, you go Essence Reaper first. Yeah, the most recent buffs to Lucian before this patch were buff, well, like buff big crit buffs. Buff, yeah. Lucian, yeah. His like, second passive auto does a lot more as a crit now. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, Overall, we got crit buffs, so I don't know if that's still worth or, or whether... Well, so you definitely go Essence Reaper way. first, regardless of whether you're going crit or not. Um, right, yeah. But I think probably the best thing to do would be like... Um, I mean, even if you don't go it first, if you go Blade the Rune King, then Essence Reaver, that's, and then you just go like a castery build, like AD caster kind of build, like maybe Triforce yeah. even. Or I mean, the traditional build was, the traditional mm. build was um, Black Blade Lever. the Rune King, Black Fever, right? And yeah. you have a lot of cooldown reduction and you'd, mm. you you shred very early in the game, most champions. But so, your double tap counts as two autos as well for Essence Reaver. Right, okay. um, which is pretty fun. Um, yeah. It's really, it is really cool to use. The only thing is, is that what you used to see with Lucian is you go in with your E, you do a bunch of damage, and as they run away, you ult them. What you see now, when you've got Essence Reaver, is you open with ult. And again, he's got that Nimbus Cloak thing that I mentioned before. So you open with ult, and even though you're slowed down by your ult, you're sped up by that rune. And so you stay in range, and you hit them with a lot of the culling. And then when you actually auto after that, you then get these ridiculous E's where you just like E. Double tap E, double tap, pretty much. Which is really cool. I mean, it's so fun <laughs> to watch. It's so fun to play. Um, I mean, it, it will make it's good very, AD carry it's players. It's going to be look, very strong. It's very It's going to make good AD carry players look like they're playing Earth almost, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. Again, he's Lucian, so it doesn't scale super well. But as you mentioned with the Callista thing, the fact yeah. that it's not just going to be like, Oh, someone else has got three items, and so now my AD carry is useless compared to those. Um, yeah. I mean, we still could see some of that, to be honest, because I did I mean, true damage. I think it depends like on how long it takes these I, these crit builds to come mm. online. If it takes too long, then I think people will just like competitively, yeah, will just opt for the two item spike and try and win the game at I that think, spike and yeah. force on that spike. I think what we might well see is that as a reaction to all these changes, no one is going to play any crit Eddie Harry's, <laughs> yeah. and then someone's going to be like, actually, wait, the game's still going 35 40 minutes by by 25, crit Eddie Harry's are still super strong, and by 30, they're still stronger than the other ones. Yeah. So I think we might swing around a bit, but for now, I'll take some playing like around, but for yeah. Sure. Yeah, I predict that we'll, we won't be seeing like that. almost any crit early carries for for a while. I think. Yeah. Uh, Misfortune. Haven't really thought that much about Misfortune. I mean, it's still Misfortune, so I don't know if we'll see it much competitive. But she's, she's very about... ability reliant, yeah. rather than auto attacks. And I think a lot of these changes are auto attack reliant changes, yeah. kind of thing. I mean, Storm Raiders plus the uh, what's it called? Love tap. That's going to be an awful lot of upfront burst. I mean, early um, game burst will be insane, but she's always had that anyway, so... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Again, you could see... really the, benefit from having see... a lot of move speed on ult. Or yeah, this, you so. could see the Essence Reaver kind of build as well. Um, but you generally... The problem with that is that these people that use Essence Reaver most effectively, I think, are people like Lucian or Cogmore, where you can ult 
sort of when you want. Whereas if you MFO at the beginning of the fight, just so you can get the Essence Reaver proc thing yeah, going, and then they all group up, it's like, oh, well, yeah, we would have done way more. It's not like her good. cooldowns are that, that valuable in terms of outside of ultimate either. She's a very much yeah. ultimate reliant champion. So, I mean, you're mm. going to get more make it rains or more Qs, but really isn't that effective compared to like Lucian E, which is super mm. very valuable. So next one, Sivir, Tristana, Twitch. They're all yeah, I mean, more just crit. Anyway, used right? to be yeah. used to be IE Essence Reaver and a, a ZL item, which now doesn't really exist. So it's going to take a long time mm. for Sivir to come in, I think. Um, yeah, and then Trist is the same as Kate and yeah, Jane. Trist. Yeah, Twitch used to have more of a on hit kind of build, but most recently when we've seen Twitch competitive, it's been BF into double zeal and then finish off the IE. Yeah. And do as much AoE crit damage as possible with the, with the hurricane. Um and ult. But I mean we might see um in him come back with the more like Blade of the Ruin King, you'd go Blade, yeah, Blade Storm Raiders. Hurricane, hurricane kind of build where it's yeah, like AoE. Where or, or I was even thinking like the was the build before that where it used to be Blade uh, Ghost Blade. So you could go okay. Blade, Storm Raiders, Ghost Blade, and then the Hail of Blades. <laughs> Hail of Blades Mastery, uh, and then you just go around as an assassin. You pop out. Uh, you'd have your first three autos yeah. really quick. You'd have your first auto as a crit. You'd have uh, the, the. I the think thousand. if um, I mean I still don't think it's going to be game. useful, but if you have a lot of early game AD carries in this meta, then it just gets kind yeah. of dumpstered so hard in lane that yeah. Also, you pop out on like an Essence Revolution, he'll just kill you. He just one shots you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just desperately trying to find an AD carry who's not just like one of these early game ones. Uh, Varus, we talked about a bit. I mean, the things about like Varus and Cogmore is that they can spike early because of like Rage Blade, but then they also scale very well into the later game because that mm. one hit doesn't like decrease, it just increases. Um, Rage Blade is such a good multiplier of stats that mm. you never like fall off, so to speak. Now, Hail of Blades might be something that Varus gets. The mastery, yeah. Um, yeah. Although lethal tempo is really strong on Varus as well, so yeah, I think Hell of Blades would be a better like early mid game kind of rune for him because mm. it just gets the passive proc, poke, proc, poke like they're, they're kind of yeah. blessed. It's going to be really strong in lane. Lethal tempo is going to be more about just sustained damage in the team fights later yeah. on. So the benefit, but again, everyone... it's good that there's options, right? I, just I quickly, the, the the benefit for everyone of lethal tempo over. Um, Hail of Blades is that it stays forever if you're in combat with a champion. So yeah. in, in a team fight, once it's procced, it's going to last for much longer, whereas the Hail of Blades is straight away. Um, right. Essence Reason on Varus again, maybe. You I mean, can I use his ult to open up a fight, and then you get more E's and Q's, but the build on Varus that we've seen the most is the on-hit one, which doesn't really matter about the the abilities so much. Maybe as a last item you get the essence reaver, but I don't think we'll see it being rushed probably. Yeah. It's unless more you about unless you go back w to land. Yeah, unless you mm. go back to poke. I, guess. I mean obviously the other thing as well, uh, not that that makes a big difference, but I'm literally just thinking of it as I'm talking. Um mm. your W now has a forty second cooldown active as well. So Yeah it does. It dropping twenty percent of that every auto is gonna be quite a big deal. It's going to be eight seconds um, of time. Yeah, every, eight seconds in auto. So every time you ult, you ult five you times. Use your active W you off cooldown quickly. Um, it's twenty percent of the remaining, so it's not quite that good, but um, it still does a big impact on that. Oh, of the remaining, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because most lady carries don't have that one long combat cooldown. Like the people who have a long cooldown, like Ash with the E, that's not actually for fighting. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe we will see it, but I, s I expect we'll just see the attack speed with the Blade of the Rune King being cheaper. Blade's 3,200 gold now, right? So that's like super cheap. Yeah, it's really, really strong good. item. That's going to be like easily rushable. So we saw, um, for example, the way Rage Blade was changed is they made it better late game, and yeah, it was still being rushed, and that was just because it was so cheap. Um, yep. So you might get the same thing with Blade. I've gone past yeah. the point yeah. where I was actually. For sure. And then Rage Blade and Blade obviously synergize <coughs> so well because mm. you're getting those double percentage health procs every other auto or mm. whatever. So. Okay, uh, Vayne, this one's quite an interesting one. Um, 
So Vayne, as you mentioned, the Halo Blade is super useful for her. You can get that Silver Bolts proc later on in the game pretty much instantly. Because the yeah. Halo Blade allows you to go past attack speed cap and gives you 100% attack speed. Um, yeah. Storm Raiders is also good because you get that first... Like that first big three hits from Vayne is going to do so much damage. Um, yeah, I mean, again, Vayne was a bit like Twitch in as much as we yeah. used to see attack like on hit builds, but then we saw like BF into crit. Um, but now with like Hella Blade's been able to just prop passive really easily, perhaps we just see mm. more more builds that are built for more passive procs from Vayne rather than big crit damage on Vayne. Yeah, or even again, I don't know if this is going to be any good, but we might as well think of it every time. Uh, Essence Reaver. When you ult in, you're going to have a lot more ease and Qs. Obviously not as, as efficient because the W is just passive. But you do have very useful um, Yeah, I mean, abilities anything well. with, with a dash ability that's on a really short cooldown is really good, for, for mm. especially for short range AD carry. That's why Lucian's so beneficial for it because yeah. he benefits from his E being on a short cooldown. Vayne's kind of similar with Tumble. So. You do... The other problem with someone like Vayne, though, is that people like Lucian... Are going to be much stronger in this meta, and so Vayne is still Vayne during the game. Like, yeah. She's still so going to be getting get shoved in. Lot. She doesn't. She's not able to de push the wave while you're getting mm. constant prior. And... Yeah. And then lastly, Zaya. Um, that's pretty much the same as the other crit. Yeah, it used to be similar to a severe, but what well, used to be the same as a severe build and the same as a severe spike, but with mm. stronger early abilities to deal with. To deal with things like that, but um, again, yeah. might we see Essence Reaver into a non crit build on Zaya, or do you just really need those crits? I feel like if these champions aren't critting, they're doing 100 damage per auto attack, and if they're doing 100 damage per auto attack, uh, literally take like 20 autos on a tank to do anything. Mm. Whereas, oh, whereas, like, why not just take something that cuts for a percentage of that, that tank's health? Yeah, I guess. Um, I feel like they need to crit to really function, but it may take. I I, I don't know what the standard crit build is now. In honesty, it, it's yeah. Just need a little bit of thinking about, but um, I'm sure it doesn't seem to be any. Up. There doesn't seem to be any AD items that give you AD and crit. It's just yeah it's, that you don't that you want to build initially. You know what I mean? Like what items do you rush on crit champions? That's not just mm. a zeal item. Um. But yeah, I think it is literally just going to be BF into Zeal, or maybe even double BF into Zeal item. Yeah, or B BF Zeal item, BF next Zeal item, and then yeah. turn those two BFs into an IE after the two Zeal items are completed. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I think that's pretty much it then for this patch. Um, it probably went on for quite yeah. a while. Didn't get the timing. Um, I guess the only thing patch. we kind of slightly didn't talk about was do these items massively I, I i mean we kind of spoke about it but do these items massively benefit stuff that isn't ad carries mm. um like are you gonna see storm raiders on zed or um SSB i mean me being an avid kindred Aurelia. player obviously kindred being an ad carry from the jungle is going to use these and like most recently on kindred the kind of best build was uh warrior into a zeal item and then into ie but yeah, that's now. Or Are you going to also Halo Blade is going to be useful or something like that? Is good. Cause yeah, because you yeah, ease someone and just like boom, yeah, boom, boom, and the, the, the guaranteed early ganks. Like when you get that item, so. Yeah, I mean, do you think we might even? I mean, I know I mentioned it a few times. When it, Kindred was first changed, we saw a bit of Kindred at, at AD carry. Do you think the fact that? Because she's she's basically not that strong until she's got four marks, right? Um, yeah. This sort of thing could make actually an impact on that. You could see a kindred in like bot lane as well as jungle, or is it just? Like... I think something like that definitely changes the champion. I, I I think it's hard to tell. I think kindred that at least should with if you if kindred started with four marks, I think she'd be a perfectly good AD carry. Mm. In, a, in a lot of matters, but I think because it takes her four marks to get that kind mm. of damage, um, it's quite hard, but I don't know. I, I, I still think that outside of Kindred as well, there there are plenty of champions that maybe we're not thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, that there's even these runes and Storm, Raiders to, um, on, Storm Raiders on AD Assassins. Yeah. Could be quite useful. Exactly. Straight in for that burst, you get the big auto. 
Mm. Like a Z or something. Yeah, Talon, things like this. I think it'll be a very interesting patch. Um, I think that's all we've got time for at the moment, because uh, we don't want to ramble on too long. Um, so we'll just do what the champions it was supposed to change, and we'll keep you updated in case it changes stuff that it wasn't supposed to. Um, but thanks very much for listening, guys. Um, we'll be doing these, as, as I said last time, every time a new patch comes out, we'll be trying um, some other things. We're basically experimenting with a more useful way of making coaching-driven content. So if you've got any ideas about that, feel free to tweet us or at Excel or leave a comment. Thanks for watching.